Hi, Mom. What's for dinner? Friction. Again. Yep. One more friction problem uh, from the ground up so that we get a good feeling that we understand this stuff. It always begins with a surface. Right now, it's always a level surface. And on that le level surface is a box. And we put the center of gravity marker like you see on the dummies. And uh, I want you to memorize that the force of friction is equal to mu static or mu kinetic times the normal force. It use the static if it is not moving and the kinetic if there is motion. And the question is, um, what are, first of all, what are the forces that act upon this box? Well, let's make the box five kilograms. So we have a mass for the box. And I'd like to draw the forces that act in the direction of motion first which are along this direction, the box moves left and right. And so one of the forces is going to be me or you pulling the box. And it's going to be opposed. You're going to be stopped to some extent by a frictional force, F sub friction. Now, I'm gonna say that the box is moving. And as the box is moving, and what causes the friction force? A normal force, F perpendicular, which is mu kinetic. I said the box was moving times, oh, this is force of friction, oh, which we'll write them on, force perpendicular is the force pressing the box and the surface together, which is the weight mg. And we use g as 10 meters per second squared. And so that's 10 times five or 50 newtons is going to be the um, unit because we name it after the guy that uh, invented you know, this gravitational rule. Uh, and that was Sir Isaac Newton. So we call them Sirs. No, Isaacs, I Isaac, Isaacs, 50, no, Newtons, 50 Newtons. That's what we use, it's 50 Newtons. Because after all, there's only one number that really matters. That, that one, one in 800, and we're gonna get one if we do this. So the box is moving, it's not static. I don't need a static friction, but if you wanna know what it is, it's 0.8. And the kinetic uh, frictional coefficient, mu k, is uh, 0.4. Keep the numbers friendly, since you don't get a calculator on, on the SSATs. So the force of uh, frick to get an acceleration, which I'll say is two meters, now we used that one before, right? Let's go with um, three meters per second squared. That is the desired acceleration. So what does Newton say? Newton's second law says F sub net, the net force, the sum of all the forces acting in the direction of motion. This force is not in the direction of motion. It causes the friction force, which does affect the motion but this does not directly affect the motion, the weight. It causes, it is the perpendicular force responsible for the force of friction. So the force net is F pull minus F friction. How do I know F pull is bigger? Because you don't walk up to something and tug on it and the box moves away from you, runs away from you. You know, I mean, a cat might, or a dog, if you leash it up and pull on it, might run away from you. But if it doesn't have any uh, ATP to generate, uh, you know, muscle uh, uh, action, or it's not a robot, when you pull on a static object, it will not pull back until you exert a force on it. F pull minus F friction. So it is moving, and I gave you the acceleration, so the net force, according to Newton's second law, is ma, so it's three times five, or 15, and that equals whatever I have to pull with, which I'm trying to find, minus the force of friction, which is mu kinetic times mg, 0.4 kinetic uh, times m, which is five times g, which is 10. And uh, so 0.4 times uh, 10 is four times five is 20. So 15 equals F pull minus 20. And that gives us 35 Newtons equals F pull. So, by the way, what force was needed to move the box? 
Well, to get the box moving, you need a static coefficient of friction. That's 0.8 times the normal force, which is 50. And 50 times 0.8 is 40 newtons. Wait a minute. You mean we're pulling with a net force of 35 newtons? I won't even get the box moving. Doesn't matter. They told you it was moving. If they hadn't have told you that, you apply whatever force you need to to overcome it. What force is that? 40 newtons. If you had not backed off of this 40 newtons, if this had been your pull force, then you would have had mass times acceleration. Uh, let's see, you would have had mass times acceleration was um, three times five or 15 would equal the pull force 40 minus the force of friction, which was 40, zero. You're pulling with too much force. So the box is going to accelerate because you didn't back off to 35. You kept the net force acting on the body as 40. So if the net force is 40, that's MA and the acceleration would be eight. So if you had pulled with the force that you needed to get the box moving, it would have, you would have to run away with it at a larger acceleration than the one I asked for. So don't get confused or scared. If you get a pull force when a box is moving, that's less than the one uh, that you need to get it moving, the static friction. Don't be bothered by this because what they don't bother to explain to you is that you provided whatever pull was necessary to get the box moving and now you apply the new force, which happens to be less than 40 uh, newtons, less than the 40 newtons to get it moving. You only need 35 to keep it moving at three. Otherwise, it'll run away from you at eight. Now, if I had asked, you know, another question, you know, this number might have, the F pull might have been bigger than 40, and maybe you would never have stopped and questioned it. But I do this so that you don't get frightened if you see a pull force, and, you know, if you go to the answer section and it's multiple choice and it says, you know, one is 10 and two is 30, it's a, and the last answer, say five is 45, don't leap at 45 newtons because it's bigger than the static uh, frictional uh, po uh, point 0.8 times 50. Don't say that it has to be bigger than that because the box is not sitting still, it's moving. So you can completely forget about the static coefficient of friction. And if you get a net force that's smaller than that, it's okay. Don't be tricked by that. It's a common trick. They'll give you one answer that's bigger and people just dive at it. You know, maybe 20% of the kids. Don't blow your 800. It's my advice to you.